Oh, it's all going wrong. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I was basically just saying, um, Streamlabs keeps crashing, and I don't know why, and it's very annoying. So, uh, yeah, I'll um, I'll have to look into that. What's this about Simba? Uh, Lord Simba control. It's not Simba. Before you say anything. Damn it, Crash, you must really be distracted by the Lion King. I think so. She's back, can't stay away from her husband, though. Simba, I guess. <laughs> Shut up, Mooney. It is Simba. No! <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> but it shouldn't crash now, hopefully. And we can continue. And all be good. Shin Vaz. Mausoleum. Hug the line. <laughs> the door to Shinva's mo mausoleum seems to be unlocked and there's a cracker jar as though someone regularly came and went. That's not what you want for a mausoleum. Just in front of it is a ring of little mushrooms growing up against the front step of the mausoleum. Uh, look at the ring. You crouch down to look at the mushrooms. They look highly poisonous, not least because you cannot see a single insect crawling around or under any of them. Is that how you know a mushroom's poisonous? Does Is that a thing? If anyone knows anything about mushrooms or insects. Um, but if, if, if that's not a thing, or if no one knows, maybe don't follow this. Just in case. I don't want any of you to taste random mushrooms because of me. Uh, unusually, the ring itself is also perfectly circular in shape. In its centre, something silver glints, a stake pushed into the soft soil. So if it's circular, that probably means it's a trap. So, cast a spell. Don't eat the mushroom. Uh, B, I, Gee, grow in size. Oh god, I need this spell. You cast the spell and feel yourself inflating to three times your normal size. There is no way you'll be able to fit inside the mausoleum building. Take the silver steak. Using your extended height, you lead on over the circle mushrooms, careful not to touch them, or the ground below. You draw the stake out of the ground. It is a short sword made, it would appear, of pure silver. Make a move. It is too cold to stand still in the shadow of the wall. Continue. Step over the ring. You take one easy step across the circle of mushrooms onto the step of the mausoleum. Then you wait for the spell to wear away. Inflation? I've seen that tag <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> Continue. Shinva's Tomb. Once you are small once more, you step into the hush of the crypt. The air inside is freezing. Dust coats the floor. Urns line the walls, but there is no coffin. The floor space is empty, except for in the far corner, where a narrow stone staircase leads down into the darkness. Jeez, I'm only sleeping. It's only 21.21 my time. Uh, do you want me to do a turn down for what? Actually, no, I'm not touching anything in case it crashes. <laughs> uh, you, you'll, uh, you'll have to, to give yourself a wake up. Um, cast a spell. Can we create light, maybe? Uh, F. A. L. Float in air. That's not what I want. Or just. I mean, yeah, go to bed. If you're tired, go to bed. You don't have to watch the stream. <laughs> F-O-G? So, no, we don't want any more darkness. Uh, D D O P. No, that opens locks and doors. Okay, let's leave it. And then um, we'll, we'll find out if anything happens. Uh, skulls peer at you from the walls. Continue. Go down the stairs. 
Unafraid of what you might find below, you make your way towards the stairs, but you must have stepped on some kind of switch, as behind you, you hear a noise, and you turn to see the door is swinging shut. Uh, run for it, try to block it, let it close. I feel like if I run for it, I'm going to get squished, so I'll we'll have to let it close and see what else we can do to find an exit. You stay back, not wanting to be crushed by the heavy stone door. It seals with a bang, and you are plunged in darkness, filled only with the sound of your own breathing and one of a noise, a distant rattle of chains. Continue. I think it'd be better that I just go to bed. Cat, good night and sweet dreams. See you next time. Thank you, Jekyll, for joining. Uh, have a good rest. Get get all, all, all rested up. And, yeah, I will see you uh, Wednesday. Hopefully, where well, I will do Star Wars. Have a good rest. Bye. Uh, in the dark. The echo of the slamming door circles the room. Things are moving across the flagstones. Uh, pray for aid or cast the spell. Let's pray for aid. You close your eyes and raise a fervent prayer to the ape. For a moment, you do not think it is heard, and then somewhere underground you hear a mighty crash, as though a heavy weight had fallen from a fraying rope. The door judders in response. It seems the counterweight, which had caused it to close, has come away, so you should now be able to open the door. Why is it open? Getting your fingers into the crack between door and wall, you are able to press it open a fraction, and then a little further still until the cool air of the graveyard is flowing into the mausoleum. You gasp with relief. Make a move. Something rushes across your boots and into a crack in the stone. Well, that's not good. Continue. Um, I'll, I don't want to get trapped, but I also do want to explore, so I'm going to go down the stairs still. You head for the stairs once more, but the light from the doorway does not go far. Halfway down, the dark is absolute once more continue. I'm going to risk it. In the dark. Menacing sounds echo up from the depths of the crypt. The clanking of chains, the moaning of wind. Perhaps there is some kind of machine down here. Perhaps the mechanism that operated the door. Surely it can be nothing worse. Uh, cast a spell. Uh, S U N no, we need the sun jewel. <laughs> H O W. Find safe passage. Cast. You cast a spell and wait for a sense of how to proceed. A voice enters your mind, telling you there is no hope for you in the darkness below. Something reach out, reaches out and touches your neck with an ice cold grip that tightens and tightens. Fight. You grapple for whoever is holding you, but either they are made of air or they dance around you, escaping your arms. Either way, you cannot reach them. You begin to choke. Struggle. You twist and turn about, but you only shake the last air from your lungs. Then, just as you think you will never breathe again, a heavy blade is pushed into your heart, and you die from that instead. Well, fuck. <laughs> What's my fate? You've been stabbed in the dark. Your adventure's at an end. No! Oh, no! Oh, that's not what we want. <laughs> Continue. Ah! R.O.P. No decision is permanent. Click the rewind button at any time if you want to scroll back and try a different path. I will, I, I will go back. We're not finishing here. But I did say no deaths. And I died. So, as punishment... I'm going to gift two subs as a Christmas present for you all. Uh, let me get that sorted. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. Can I? Uh, da, da, da.
There we go. There's one coming. Muncher. Yay, you got one. Uh, and then I will gift one more. Yay! Miso, Miso, you also get one. There we go. That is my punishment and my Christmas present to you all. <laughs> oh no, now Sorcery doesn't want to <laughs> load. <laughs> Have I broke it? No! Oh dear, what's going on here? Okay, so Sorcery's crashed. <laughs> Let me just get that back up. Okay, so let's rewind until we get to uh, the graveyard. But also as punishment, Grand Muncher, you got a gifted sub from me. <laughs> um. I basically I died and I did I I set myself a goal of not dying so as punishment I have gifted some subs and you got one so yay well done to you <laughs> you must be confused <laughs> uh the wind whistles between the tall trees the sun is setting behind the wall uh yeah what I was going to say was um as another punishment I cannot um is all skill. <laughs> um, I cannot now take that route, so I lose out on the silver sword and any hopes of getting a clue from the noble. Um, because that wouldn't be fair, you know, that wouldn't be fair if I can redo it over and over again. So we have to now leave and uh, move on. Stick to the path. You have no intention of wandering between the stones, especially when the path is so clear. You continue along the way, curving between ancient trees and listing stones. Then suddenly you hear a deep moan and the rattle of chains. Something is clouding the air in front of you. It is a death wraith. This land is cursed for the living, the death wraith moans, raising its ghostly spectral arms and holding out bony fingers. You must become dead. Fight it. We got silver weapons. You ready your sword and strike at the death wraith, but the blade passes straight through. Of course, only silver weapons can harm a spectre. Uh, try the bow and arrow. You whip the bow off your shoulder and fire at the death wraith. The impact makes it stagger back, clearly wounded. It stops its approach and instead hovers just on the edge of the path, guarding its patch but not approaching any closer. Um, fire again. You fire again and the death wraith launches forward determined now to kill you before you kill it. The battle is short but frantic as you fire and fire again with arrow after arrow slipping into the spectre's form, making it flicker and separate like layers of spider webs peeling apart. Eventually you fire your final arrow and the wraith howls and disappears into the ground, but others are springing up behind it. The graveyard is well defended and you should leave. Continue. Uh, leave or escape the graveyard. Let's get out of here. Beside the gate is a disused well, perhaps once used to draw water to wash the bodies before internment. Uh, pull up the bucket. You turn the winch on the side of the well, drawing up the bucket from beneath. It comes to the top filled with clear water. Is this as fresh as the water from the other fountain you tried? Uh, drink from the bucket. You scoop a handful of water and taste it. Despite your surroundings, it is fresh and quite clear. You feel much better for it. Um, move on. The rear gate of the graveyard hangs from its hinges, but not from age. It seems that it has been taken apart. 
may be widened even to let something through. Beyond is deep forest. Continue. Follow the path. You walk for half an hour through thick trees along a narrowing track until you reach a fork in the road. To the left, the track gets narrower still. To the right, a massive shadow looms, so large it seems as though a colossus has seated itself on the wall in fort. A chill wind blows through you as the ghosts walk back and forth this way. Uh, look at the shadowy sheep. The shadow to the right has a jagged silhouette. It is a ziggurat. I feel that's not said right, but I'm still going to go with it. With perhaps a hundred steps leading to its apex, the trees whisper and move. Look down the left fork. Looking left, you see distant flicker torchlight through the trees. The north gate, perhaps? Night is drawing in. You should get moving. Things whisper between the trees. Continue. Let's go to the ziggurat. You stand at the base of a towering ziggurat built from carved stone blocks, each the size of a hay bale. The temple rises higher than the city wall and positioned to catch the first star of evening at its uppermost point, a moment which has just passed. Uh, look for an opening. You tilt your head back, looking for an opening and finally make one out. A small black dot, about a third of the way up, but even that is quite some climb. For the less devoted worshippers, a small gargoyle by the steps has an open mouth ready to accept offerings. Uh, let's climb up. You begin the climb, hauling yourself up the first step. Either this ziggurat was built for giants, or ascending is an act of devotion. The next few steps are equally exhausting. You have to throw your pack up first and follow. Keep going. You persevere, but as you climb higher, the going becomes easier. The temple's designers have built a clever clever optical illusion into the slope of the pyramid. Soon, each step is only waist height. You reach a halfway point, almost as high as the city wall beyond, and pause to rest. Halfway up. You are halfway up. Freezes, freezes, freezes? Freezes of gargoyles in polished metals ring the temple on this level. Uh, eat something, look at the view, climb high. Let's eat something. At least, away from the rats and night foxes that live on the ground, you are free to eat. You take out a quantity of your provisions and eat it quickly, feeling better for both the nourishment and the rest. The wind claws at you, trying to pull you to earth. Look at the view. You pause a little longer to take to the view. From this side of the ziggurat, you can see nothing but the top of the wall and beyond the gleaming darkness of the marshes of the backlands. Uh, walk around to the north face. You move around to the north face. You can see the path ahead running straight between wild and overgrown trees. It seems very few people come this way anymore. The north gate itself is now visible, however, and appears deserted. Then you notice a point of light. A torch has been lit between the trees. Uh, watch the torches. You watch as the torches move through the trees towards the path. They are making slow progress, but they are moving towards the graveyard and presumably from there on into town. Uh, climb higher. You continue the weary climb to the first level of the ziggurat. Continue. By the opening. You climb for another 20 minutes up the steep stone steps until you are gasping and panting for breath once more. But finally, you reach the dark opening that you saw from the base of the temple. The steps themselves continue up a little further still, to the very peak of the temple. Look in the opening. The opening is guarded by rock-sculptured images of unimaginable creatures. Beyond, you see a long, dark hallway with something large and gleaming at the far end. Continue. Enter the temple. You step into the temple. The hollow space amplifies your footsteps and they echo eerily for several moments. On the floor, in gilt inlay, is written the name of the god who inhabits this space. It seems that this is the ziggurat of Kulga, the gracious. Wait and listen. You wait for a few heartbeats to see if you have disturbed anything. Nothing happens and then you catch the tail of a gigantic snake slithering across the floor 
and disappearing into a crack in one wall. From the markings along its back, it looks highly poisonous. Go inside. You enter the tape. You, bleh, you enter the table. <laughs> you enter the temple, but the snake still manages to catch you by surprise, launching in itself from a crack in the ceiling behind you. Uh, we do big boy attack. Oh god, we took up so much stamina. The temple sl snake snaps and hisses at the air between you. You swing out wildly, hoping to chop it in two, as it also shoots forward. The snake lashes out wildly in its agony. Cut. Down you go. Snake. 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 Rip. <laughs> the temple snake is retreating, but you give chase. Launching off your heels, you lunge for the beast snack. With a weird scream that echoes round the cold stone, the snake dies, its head crashing to the floor. No stamina loss, flawless fighting. Yay! Continue. You wipe your sword clean and wait for the violent echoes of the fight to fade away. Then you go further in. The sight of the shrine takes your breath away. The walls are decorated with brightly coloured murals depicting scenes from the religious mythology of care. Fine ornaments and precious metals are set into alcoves around the pews, and rich woven tapestries cover every surface. A cunning trick of architecture catches the wind past the doorway and creates a constant ethereal humming as though a crowd of monks sat in permanent meditation inside. Continue. Further in. At the far end of the hallway, four large stone gargles are winged demons watch over the shrine from mounts high up in the eaves guarding the altar, on which a gigantic idol squats, Korga himself. Continue. Oh god. Uh, approach the altar. You walk up towards the altar across a richly patterned carpet. Something about it gives you pause. Its surface is decorated with wide symbols that seem too deliberate to be accidental. Just walk across, avoid the star shapes, avoid the circles, avoid the spirals. Uh, we want to avoid the circles, don't we? Circles are bad, but I'm going to cast a spell just in case. Uh, S, U, S, sense danger, be sus. You cast a spell and a clear calm voice enters your mind and informs you that there is indeed a trap in the rug in front of you. But before it can tell you where, a second presence enters your mind booming and declares, make your choice worshipper, Korga himself perhaps? Uh, avoid the circles. You walk up to the altar, stepping carefully around the circle in the carpet. <laughs> Thanks for the sus sticker, uh, Rooney. <laughs> you walk up to the altar, stepping carefully around the circle in the carpet, and reach the altar steps without incident. Continue. The altar. You stand before the idol, a fat statue set with gems and curious pockmarked features. Above his head is a plaque that bears an inscription. Uh, read it. It reads, On Korga's face you kiss a cross and finish with the lips. For answers to your questions you must ear, not else he spits. You step nervously up the steps into your below the great statue. Uh, on Korga's face you kiss a cross and finish... Okay, so we have to do a cross on his face and finish on the lips. So, if I was to do kissy cross I would go left to right forehead to lips that seems right to me also this man has this statue has massive boobs look at them um kiss the idol you stand on tiptoes and lean in preparing to kiss the statue but where does the humming in the temple seem to be getting louder uh so left to right up to down to kiss the left eye, kiss the right eye, kiss the forehead, <laughs> Ayo. kiss the lips, 
Finally, you lean low and kiss the idol's lips. As you straighten once more, you see the idol's eyes flick open. A soft voice issues from its mouth. Stranger, you were not of my faith, whispers the god, and yet you have completed my ritual. How can that be? I have used my wits. I am lucky. I have used my wits. The god laughs softly. My brother, Pashna, is the god of thieves and tricksters. But you are in my temple today. I will answer three questions if you have questions to ask. You take a moment to think over everything you have learned and not learned about the North Gate spell. We have only learned very few of the lines of the spell. Um, tell me the spell for the gate. How can I find Lord Tita? How can I find Lord Mulas? And how can I find Lorag? What will my fate hold in the backlands? How can I avoid the guards at the North Gate? I feel like if I just go for tell me the spell, he's going to be like... I'm not just giving you the spell, that's too easy. So I need to know where the lords are. So tell me how to find Lord Tita. Uh, oh, three questions, so I can do Mulas as well, and Lorag. Uh, how can I find Lord Tita? You ask, bowing as you speak. The god murmurs to himself, Lord Tita is now blind and begging in a ruined part of the city. But know this, he does not want to be found. The god waits for your next question. How can I find Lord Mulas? You ask the god in a reverential tone. The second noble has been dead for a long time, Korga replies softly. Although he does not stay dead, he moves around the lower part of the city, a half-decayed, half-animated corpse. The god waits for your final question. How can I find Lorag? How can I find Lorag? You ask the god in a soft tone. You lead down to hear the god's murmured reply. He has gone and will not return. But all the same, you will meet him soon enough. A great silence descends upon across the room. And then the god speaks once more. Now, he, he intones, I have a question for you. You have completed my ritual. Do you wish to enter my worship? Uh, what sort of god are you? Korgis seems to almost smile. I am the god of grace, he replies. There are few as generous as I. I don't want to lose my spirit animal, so I'm going to go no. No, you shake your head. So be it, Korga answers. There is a brief murmuring as Korga blesses you, grace, gracious even in rejection. And then the temple falls quiet once more. You te turn and head out of the temple door. You have found one new clue and other clues have been updated. Let's go. I want to try and get to the top. You are back by the opening in the temple. Continue. Ah, climb for the top. You turn back to the steps and climb higher, all the way to the top of the ziggurat. Night has fallen. Stars spread across the sky in a peaceful repose that belies their true nature. Warring spirits tussling for control of the world below. Look at the view, look at the stars. Let's look at the stars. With your head tilted back, you can see more stars than you have ever seen in this city. Perhaps you are above the level of the lights and the smog and the dust. Or perhaps more stars choose to cluster here around the sacred site. If you were a true mage and not a mere sorcerer, who knows what spells one could weave at a spot like this. Try to fashion a spell. Yeah, let's make magic. You lean back and look up, trying to recognise the stars from your studies. Cast a spell. Uh, uh, P, E, R. No, that doesn't seem right. Uh, L, U, K. That, yeah, that seems like it'd be a, a, a luck spell. I think with the spells you have to make some sort of word, so yeah, I'm going to go with that. You fashion the stars into alignment and an enchantment is created. You feel a strange force entering your bones, as though you are growing stiff and you begin to shake. Something has happened to you, but what? What effect will it have and how long will it last? You have found one of the secret spells of the Temple of Korga. The icy wind chills you to the bone. Look at the view. 
You look out across the city in the far distance. You see torches in the woods towards the north gate. Looking back, you see the lights of care coming on and the shouts of revellers, drunks and nighttime thieves. Go down. The view is quite wondrous, but your journey beckons. You start the long climb back down the ziggurat once more. Continue. By the opening. You return to the opening in the temple. Continue. Climb back down. The climb back down is easier going. Halfway down, you pause to rest. Look at the view. You look out to the north. The fit trees are still lit by torchlight and you hear the distant baying of wolves. Uh, climb down. You have seen enough. You climb cl quickly back down the steps and retrace your steps to the fork in the road. Continue. The fork. The mud underfoot is stamped with footprints, and in between them, the prints of many paws. I knew werewolves were in this. I mean, they could just be dogs, but I'm, I'm calling werewolves. The road to the gate. You walk between clawing trees and thick bushes. The north gate is finally in sight. You can see its imposing, ornately carved wooden doors over the top of the guard huts and low buildings that lie at the end of this road. Uh, look at the guard huts. You pause to watch the guard huts. They seem quite still. One has a hole in its roof. Weed goes through the chimney of another. Are they abandoned? <laughs> I hope that's not some sort of suspicious weed. Uh, although I'd be concerned if weed was growing through the chimney. <laughs> uh, but between here and there is a long road, lined by thick and gloomy trees. A patch of wild forest like you haven't seen since the hills. Go cautiously, go quickly, go cautiously. You make your way slowly forward, trying to ensure your feet do not crunch too loudly on the gravel. Something catches your eye. Movement in the shadows on both sides of the road. Torchlight. Stop and look. You stop, ducking into the shadows and watch. Whatever is moving in the darkness, there are a lot of them. Then a gleam of moonlight catches one and you see it clearly. A wolf, clad in tight metal armour. No, a werewolf. No matter, you have defeated werewolves before. Have we? Uh, wait for what happens. You hold your ground, waiting. The werewolf does not seem crazed or uh, manacle. There is no full moon to drive it wild. You are glad of your patience as further werewolves pad down from the shadows onto the path, forming an arch in front of you. Uh, wait. You wait tensed and ready to run if necessary. Then you notice a man stepping from the tree line beyond. Who goes there, he demands. Friend or foe? Uh, friend. Friend, the man does not respond. It is clear he's waiting for something, but for what? Please, I need to pass or guess a pass. Let's guess a pass phrase. Closing your eyes and trusting to luck, you begin with Vic or Sansus. I don't think it'll be Sansus. That seems too obvious because he's the first noble. I'm going Vic. I don't know who Vic is. Vic, the man seems to be listening. First noble or criminal? First... Have I got the names wrong? First noble? The man sighs a huge sigh of relief. It's a dangerous night to be going round without saying the passphrase he scolds you. There's plenty of us who'd have, have your throat without waiting. Um... Asking about Vic, asking about the wolves, asking about asking about Vic. Who's Vic? What is Vic doing? Leading the charge, the man replies proudly, walking to the council building. The wolves following a decent way behind. He wants to show he is not afraid to stand alone. Uh There's no one there, they will kill him, he's a brave man. There's no one there. The council chamber is empty. The man laughs and shakes his head. I do not think so. If the city had no leader, we would know. But you can see you have shaken his confidence a little. With that, he whistles to his walls and swoops away into the night. 
you breathe a heavy sigh of relief. Who's Vic? I feel like I've missed something here. You've found two new clues. Continue. The North Gate. Oh, guys, we're here. You have reached the North Gate. The ground before it is wide and clear and lit by blazing torches set into brackets either side of the enormous sealed doors. Should there be archers hiding in the shadows, they would have a clear sight on you. Off to one side is a well, but there is no other cover. You don't know any of the spell lines, of course, but perhaps the gate will open to a dot spell after all. Uh, let's drive over to the gate. Wait and watch. Let's go to the gate. Throwing caution to the wind, you step out the shadows and approach the gate. Time to see how good your lockpicking skills really are. Continue. The North Gate. You reach the other side of the clearing, unscathed, and stand below the enormous doors. Cast a spell. I don't think this is going to work, but we'll see what happens. Uh, D. O. P. Opens locks and doors. You cast the dot spell, hoping that everything you have heard about the doors being wizard locked is bluster and hyperbole. Nothing happened. You hear a scrambler noise in the distance. Well, bugger. Uh, force open the doors? You haul at the door. The gate does not even rattle. Suddenly, you are not alone. A phantom voice issues from the wood itself. Halt, stranger, it booms. Do you know the spell which controls the gate? Uh, I do not. You reply honestly. The voice begins to laugh. Then the gate denies you, replies the voice. From across the clearing you hear a scrabbling sound of metal moving over stone. You look around but see nothing. Uh, look at the shadows by the wall, look at the well, look them on the track. Let's look at the shadows. You gaze into the shadows by the wall, expecting from the sound to see guardsmen sneaking along and dragging the points of their swords across the stones behind them. But there is nothing there. Then you hear a cry and you whip round to see a face emerging from the well shaft in the corner of the clearing. It bears the leering, hook-toothed smile of a goblin. The creature is climbing a rope with a grappling hook attached, which is hooked over the lip of the well. Run to hide or attack? Let's run to hide. You turn to run, aiming to find somewhere you can hide and watch what unfolds. But then you realise that you are running for your life, as goblin after goblin clambers from the well and begins to race across the clearing towards you. There is no way you can fight a hundred goblins, so you dash aside into the shadows. Continue. Bloody hell, what's going on here? The goblins pour up to the gate. Are they going to try and ram it? But then they stop, and in their midst, a small figure is being propelled forward. You cannot clearly see him, but he's wearing a dull metal circlet on his brow, which he clutches as though it was keeping him safe. Their king, perhaps? But since when have goblins had a king? He is surrounded by a guard of nearly twenty goblins, as though, as though he was indeed precious. Hand back. You hand back, watching as the figure nears the gate. Leaning down to the lock, he whispers something, but you cannot hear what he says. A moment later, the gate begins to move. It is opening. Uh, run for the open gate or stay back? Run for the open gate. This is your chance to leave the city. You rush forwards, chanting fearsome sounding liturgy at the top of your lungs to scare the goblins and clear them aside. You are nearly there, when suddenly a great cry goes up from outside the walls. Something is moving out there. Uh, keep running. You keep pelting madly forward, for once simply running madly and not waiting to look around. You are almost through the gates when you see what is out there. An army of marsh goblins. Thousands of them, fully armed and stampeding into care. Keep going, turn back, or drop to one side of the gate. Oh dear, uh, let's keep going. You try to fight, fight your way forward, but the invading army pushes you back with a force like an oncoming tide that sweeps you off your feet and dumps you on the other side of the clearing. The incoming goblins spill through the gate filling the clearing and meeting their hill cousins in a loud and violent celebration. The man with the circlet at the gate cries with glee. A new day for care begins, he cries, clambering onto the shoulders of a nearby goblin 
as though he's about to make a speech. Quite suddenly, the goblins that are carrying him let him go. He cries out as he falls to the ground. A sword goes up, slashing down. There is a scream. They've murdered their own king. What is going on here? The circlet from his head rolls to your feet. The goblins, clashing sword on shield, look towards the city with violent eyes. Take the circlet, hide in the shadows, or go for the gate. Let's go for the gate. Their attack on care is not your concern. Darting forward through the crowd of creatures, you head for the open gate and the backlands. Continue. Run for the gate. You run for the gate, but your progress is slow. Goblins are surging in, and they are starting to organise. One, a leader of some kind, is hoisted up by the others so he can address the crowd. Care falls, he screams in his guttural voice, and every creature dies. Suddenly, goblin eyes are turning on you as if they had not seen you before. One swims forward, but there are a hundred more behind. Run for it. You cannot keep this up. Wave after wave of goblin is filling the yard. You cannot hope to kill them all with just your sword. You turn and race away into the shadows. Then a voice rings up. Stop! There is a better way. Look for the speaker. You look around but can see no one, but all around you something is happening. It is as though the goblins have slowed down, their war mongering becoming an absurd, stately dance. The noise in the clearing dulls to a low rumble. I commanded you to stop, the voice cries, and suddenly you feel yourself held rigid. From the smoke of the torches by the gate, a figure emerges. Look at the figure. It is an old man with a long beard and deep black irised eyes. He paces through the churning goblin army to stand in the open. His legs disappear into a spectral trail. He, he is at least part wraith. Step forward, he commands, and you find yourself bidden. Approach the figure. The goblins seem to part around you like smoke as you approach the figure. I have aligned three stars, the ghostly man declares. Vic rises tonight. The goblins show their hand tonight, but also you. You are here tonight. My name, the figure intones, is Lorag. I was once a scholar and a noble of this city. Later, I founded it. You founded it later? I need to leave the city. Uh, you founded it later? You reply confused. Who is this crazed shade? I saw care was falling. Sansus had lost his mind and sided with the goblins. The council was in ruins. My own life was threatened. I saw that care needed to be saved, so I went back to remake it in a way that could be saved. And here we are now. You have been here two days. I have been here hundreds of years, waiting for you to bring me the spell of the gate. Uh, but the gate is already open. Don't you know the spell? Why do you need me? Find them yourself. Um, but the gate is already open. You reply. The goblins opened it. Their leader did. The figure slowly shakes his head. The spell does not open the gate. His tone is heavy and dark like tarred timber. The spell controls it. And there are deep magics burned into the wood itself. Magics that poison the city and burn fire into the eyeballs of those who live nearby. He stares at you, his coal black eyes expressing no emotion. Deep magics are you placed there to be used by you tonight. I am dead. You must act for me. How can I find the spare lines? You ask. I travelled the city and learnt nothing. The wizard nods. The lines are known to four nobles. Lord Tito is blind and living in the wastelands of Upper Care. Lord Shinva is dead but not yet forgotten in his mausoleum in the necropolis. Lord Morlus was a follower of the god Slang. And in his shrine near the docks of Lower Care you may learn his line. And as for my line, I give it to you freely. Tombers too, sealed deep inside. The spell lines you have found are listed in the key section of your inventory. But there is no more time. I will go back. I have no stomach for your quest. Um, go back? Are we going to go back in time? Uh, but there is no more time. But there is no more time, you insist. It is too late. There is a magic, Lorag replies, that will give you the time you need. I cast it on myself once and went far back to before the city was built. I found a care, now you will save it. 
He waits to let his words sink in. If you will allow me, he says, I will bend time itself so that you may return to the city and find the spell for the gate. So, shall you take the adventure, or will you leave care to burn? Understand also, he has darkly. I will curse you and the journey to follow if you do not assist me. You hesitate. Care is a city of traps, but also of secrets, and there is still more that you might find. Can you afford to let the city port burn? You have found one new clue, and other clues have been updated. Oh, wow. Um, okay. <laughs> so, we either abandon care to burn by the goblins, and by Vip, who I presume has werewolves, and he will curse us. Or, we go back in time. I don't know why I said that weirdly. We go back in time, and we try to learn the spell lines, and we continue the search. Whew. Okay. Um, I think we're going to have to go back in time. I think, I think we should do this. We should be the hero that we are. Continue the search. I will help you, you tell him. The wizard nods. I thank you. Read it myself. He raises his arm and begins the spell. The raging goblins stand like statues. You feel yourself lifting up from your body as though you've been snatched away by birdmen. As you lift into the air, you hear Laura cry out one last piece of advice. Find the lines and find the order of the lines. Care dwindles beneath you and you feel your body growing weaker. Continue. Uh, I, yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's go back. This will take you back in time to continue your search for the spell lines from outside care. Go. Oh, there, there we go. Uh, and we're back. You are being wrenched in directions you did not know existed. The pain is unbearable, and just when you think you will go mad from it, the forces tear you apart. You struggle to grab onto your belongings and your very self as you tumble down from the clouds, and then you are awake. Your eyes are open once more. Your surroundings have changed. You are back on the path outside care in the twilight. It is though the last two days had not occurred, except that you now know the layout of the city and the whole matter of the spell lines. And we're back. We're back, guys. Um, I'm going to call it there. Uh, because, oh, yeah, that, that was a lot. <laughs> um, I think what I'm going to do is uh, I will redo that section off stream and try and get these spell lines. And then we can go straight into sorcery free. Because uh, I don't want you guys to, like, miss out on... Um, or not miss out, but get bored of doing the same story again. So, uh, yeah, I will, I will, I will, I will get it all ready, and uh, we will, we we will be back in sorcery free. Um, I'm just looking for a ray target at the moment. But thank you for joining me today for some more story time. Um. I hope you all had fun and you're enjoying it. Uh, I will be back at uh, Wednesday for to finish up Star Wars, hopefully. And yeah, thank you guys. Uh, let me just see who would be best to read. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, oh, let's do this person. Okay. Uh, let's see if I do this right. Read. Aha! There we go. Uh, so go uh, raid this person and show some love. And thank you all for joining me again. And I will see you uh, on Wednesday. Bye bye everyone.